My name is Credit Coach Nicole Scott. Thank you so much for joining. Make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can get notified when our latest and greatest videos are dropping. We drop videos on a weekly basis to help you. So if you're interested in repairing your credit, building credit, whether that be personal credit or business credit, or even to get personal funding or business funding, you are in the right place today. So make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. How to start a Turo business. How to be able to leverage your personal credit and business credit so you can start your very own car rental business. Make sure that you've watched all of the videos within week nine where we are going to be covering the ins, the outs, all about Turo. Let's go. My calendar in here, you guys can always book a call with me as well. And uh, we can go over a few things like individually. Uh, I definitely don't mind doing that with you guys. So let me ga grab my calendar real fast and I'll drop it in the chat. Actually, I'll put it in the Facebook group for you guys. So okay. if you guys ever have questions, you can always book a call and uh, get some clarification on some things. We can go over it together. to uh, be honest at first when I first started doing credit I was a little intimidated I was extremely intimidated when I got my first bankruptcy client because I had never removed a bankruptcy in my life and um, man of course it didn't come off first round second round and then by that time the guy had disappeared which I was almost kind of thankful for but at the same time I still wanted to get some experience so I continued to try to work on his file for him <clears throat> until his credit monitoring turned off. The guy literally disappeared off the, the face. I don't even know if something happened to him or what, but that was pretty weird. Um, but that happens sometimes. People just ghost you. And uh, hey, whatever, you know, good luck to them. Yeah, well, I don't want to take any, any of your time. That That's very helpful. And I'd like to continue with you. Yeah, if, for when sure. When we start tackling this, I don't want to go out on this particular one by myself yeah no worries we'll, we'll get we'll get that going for you um Very good. all right so let's go ahead and get started today guys thanks for joining happy tuesday today we're going to be talking about turo and turo um is something that i do me and my partner timothy miller we we have a turo business we have three autos currently on turo and um we actually had four at one point and we took one of the cars back because no one was renting it. So, oh my gosh, think about if you buy a car for Turo and you get stuck with it and nobody's renting the car, what the hell do you do? Well, um, I recommend buying cars from CarMax. Why? Because they have the love your car guarantee, where if you don't love your car within 30 days, you can take it back to CarMax with no questions asked. They don't harass you. They don't start like, you know, nitpicking at you. They might ask you a few probing questions and then you're like, no, nah, I'm good. I just want to return my car. No problem. They'll write you a check and provide you with a refund of whatever you may have paid to them. But with that being said, we want to take our own financing. They do accept um, alternative financing like outside of CarMax. So if you got approved with Bank of America, they do take Bank of America financing. They take Bank of America business financing. Now, I had a, a little bit of an issue when I went to CarMax for the business um, Bank of America account because back then, this was like last year, Every It was very new and it was very confusing to a lot of the people that worked at CarMax. So they didn't really know how to uh, write the contract. And that was the only problem that I had. So I do recommend that if you do have alternative lending like Bank of America, especially if it's on your business side, you call the dealership prior to going there. Now with alternative lending, like if you go and get your own auto financing through your bank, like if I go to Navy Federal, I'm going to go to Navy Federal's branch and I'm going to pick up a check. Then that check is going to be for whatever I was approved for. So uh, for my Camry that I have, I, I got approved with Navy Federal and we got approved for $30,000. And um, I was able to take that $30,000 check 
directly to CarMax and buy a Toyota Camry with it. Now, since I had a check for $30,000, that means that that $30,000 check is going to cover my in uh, my taxes and whatever other fees are included when I go and purchase my car from CarMax because it's a check from a bank. So I didn't have to put any money down. I literally had no out-of-pocket expenses when I bought my Toyota Camry because I went and found a Toyota Camry that was a 2018. It had extremely low miles and it was only about like $27,000. So the, the total expense um, in, in price of the overall vehicle was under $30,000. So I literally handed over my check. And as long as, you know, it's under 30 or up to 30,000, then that check from Navy Federal will go ahead and cover it. So um, that car, no out of pick, no out of pocket expenses. Now, Bank of America is a little bit different, especially on the business side. Uh, sometimes they will only approve you up to like a certain um, percentage for the taxes and the fees. So sometimes you got to pay out of pocket. So when I bought, I bought, um, a to what was it? Not a Toyota. I bought a, a Cadillac with Bank of America financing back in December. Well, that Cadillac was a, a color that a lot of people might not like. It was red. It was burgundy, beautiful color, I thought, right? And I also did my market research on Turo. Um, and I saw the same vehicle, same model, and it had 70, not pink, but red, burgundy red, right? It was great for holiday season. But unfortunately, nobody else liked it. Uh, nobody wanted to rent it. I had that car for two, three weeks. Nobody was renting it. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be stuck with this car, paying this car note. And I haven't paid a car note in so long. This is not good. So thank God I had bought it from CarMax because CarMax, uh, if you don't love your car within 30 days, you can return that bad boy uh, quick, fast, and in a hurry. And they gave me my money back. So I was very, very thankful for them. You just can't drive it over, I think, 1,500 miles. But you know, chances are you probably won't. And if you don't have a booking on Turo in the first two weeks, then that car is not hot. So you don't want to have that car anyways. Uh, Turo is a great alternative to basically the Airbnb of rental cars. Uh, Turo is up and coming. They don't do a lot of advertising right now. You probably, if you haven't heard of Turo, it's probably because you haven't seen any advertising. It's a very... Um, you know, I would say up and coming business for a lot of people. So if you are in a market where you're near an airport, Turo is going to be a great way for you to put your, put some rental cars on there and make some additional income and also, you know, be able to drive your vehicles for free. Um, one of our vehicles is a Mercedes Benz and, um, you know, Mercedes are very expensive. The car note on that bad boy is probably like a thousand dollars, but Turo pays for it every month. I have never had to pay that car note. And I've had that car for at least a year now. I have not had to pay that car note since I got it because, you know, even if someone rents it, maybe, you know, five, 10 days out of the, out of the month, um, chances are they're going to pay for that car note. So that's the goal with Turo is you want to have your car notes covered and make additional income. Now let's talk about, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my Turo app with you guys so you kind of get an idea of how it works and some of the different features that Turo offers for you guys, because it can be a little confusing and um, Turo, you know, a lot of their representatives are out of like South America, so they're not uh, from the U.S., so it's kind of difficult to understand them sometimes, but in the long run, they are pretty thorough and um I always recommend, you know, you can never fully trust someone else with your vehicle. So you have to take precautions and you have to put tracking devices on your vehicles. We do not have a tracking device on our Toyota Camry because a Toyota Camry is not going to bring in the same type of clientele that a Mercedes Benz would or a Dodge Charger would. Um, a lot of people that rent our Toyota Camry, they're family members, they, um, they're traveling, uh, maybe they're getting their car worked on at the auto shop. Um, whatever the case is, those the Toyota Camry is definitely bring in a different type of client for us. Uh, we have tracking devices on our uh, Mercedes and the Dodge Charger, and we can see where everyone's at. We can we can kill the engine if we wanted to. If we we had one issue on Turo so far, one, and a gentleman, uh, we were at the airport to pick up our vehicle because 
I always recommend never use your home address as the pickup and drop off location. Use a central location, a grocery store or an airport. So all of our vehicles address is actually listed at the Sacramento airport. We do not list them from our home address. We do not even list them in our city because we are in the country. We are in the middle of freaking nowhere. And uh, we are in a horrible location for Turo, but the Sacramento airport is a great location for Turo. So we list our vehicles at the gas station at the airport. You can also list your vehicles at the airport. You would just have to go and meet your guests. Uh, some people have the Turo Go where you can can have like an automated system where you like go onto an app and unlock the car for the client to get in. But I don't do that. I like to meet all of our guests. I like to take a picture of them with their um, identification. We do our pre-trip inspection. Um, we make sure if the guest, you know, has any questions, they reach us on Turo, not our cell phones, because we want all of our communication recorded with the guest. And then we meet them back at the airport when they're ready to return the vehicle. Some airports are stricter than others. Um, Sacramento is one of them. They do not allow Turo to, to stop or to basically be on their ground. So we have to meet them at a gas station at the airport. So we meet our guests at the AMPM gas station. And then when we're ready for the guests to depart, uh, we will take them to the airport uh, from the gas station if they need a ride to the airport. So that's one way that you guys can do it. Or if you don't live near an airport, you can always um, have your address as, you know, like a local gas station or a Starbucks or a grocery store or anywhere that you would feel comfortable meeting your guests to swap out your vehicle. Um, think about it like this. Enterprise. Do the market research on what vehicles are hot. So Enterprise, uh, Hertz, all of those different places. I'm going to share my screen with you guys so we can do a little bit of market research. And then I'm actually going to share on my cell phone so I can share the Turo app with you guys as well. And this is going to help you guys determine you know, if Turo is going to be a good fit for you, if so, what Turo, what uh, vehicles in your area are going to be hot. So um, I'm just going to use, um, let's go ahead and just use Sacramento. So I'm going to go ahead and just put Sacramento, California Enterprise. Okay. So we can go to their website and we can see what kind of vehicles they have. Uh, by location, okay, you can see what their prices are, you can see, uh, you know, a lot of different information. So this is what your normal average traveler is going to get from Enterprise. Now, recently, there has been a rental card shortage because of the, the chips not being able to be sent over. There's been a lot of, um, you know, just rental car facilities that don't have the inventory, uh, which is great for us because that is perfect. And the more, honestly, the more people that learn about Turo, the more um, Turo is going to, is going to blow up. Now, Turo has recently started partnering with um, travel sites. Like I believe they partnered with like Travelocity and um, places they're starting to, you know, partner more and more with these traveling sites because, you know, you can easily rent a car from a lot of these traveling sites, but not a lot of people have not heard of Turo. So obviously they don't use Turo. They're going to use something that they've heard of like Enterprise. But look at some of the prices on some of this stuff. So for like a Toyota Corolla or something similar, um, I'm going to be paying uh, for... Let's see, per week, I'm going to be paying $486 for a week with Enterprise. Um, that's a lot of money. So let's see, with taxes and fees, 486 divided by seven, that's $69 a day for a Toyota Corolla, okay? That's a very small car. You can only fit about three bags in there, okay? Let's talk about um, a full-size car. So Chevy Malibu um, or a sporty car, Dodge Challenger, 931 for a week. You're crazy. Um, full-size, elite, premium SUV, $1,100 for a premium SUV. These, these, 
you can get for probably five, 600 bucks a month. Um, and you can make a lot of money. It's all dependent upon your area. You know, you got to do your market research and see what cars are most popular out there. And you have to stick to the basic colors, uh, black, white, silver, gray, um, you know, the, the basic neutral colors. Um, we have a gray Dodge Charger. We have a white Toyota Camry and we have a black Mercedes Benz. Those, all of those cars do extremely well. The most popular car that we have is the Toyota Camry. Why? Because people love Toyota Camrys. They're great on gas. And the number one car in Sacramento, California is a Toyota Camry. So I highly recommend that you do a little bit of research on Google and find the most popular car. So let's look for Texas. Um, we'll put number one car in Texas. What is it? You know, it might be a truck because trucks are more popular in Texas. Might be an SUV. Um, Toyota Camry. Look at that. So number one is the Toyota Camry. Ford F-150. Uh, Nissan Altima. Nissan Altimas do really well on Turo as well. But with uh, trucks, you know, a lot of people need to rent trucks to move stuff, to move furniture, to move things. So if you do have a truck, you're going to have to invest in um, some covers for your bed and, you know, some additional accessories so your the truck doesn't get scratched. Because my Mercedes has so many scratches and nicks and just damage from people. Um, and Turo does not cover a lot of that stuff. So you have to deal with the person directly. So you want to try to prevent that from happening. And, um, you know, I always, when I'm renting my vehicles out to someone, I never just rent them for a day. If someone wants to rent our cars, they have to rent them for a minimum of two days. That's not required. Like you might say, Hey, I don't mind renting my car out for a day, but for us, we have to go to the airport. We have to, you know, clean the car. Um, and at first we were actually taking our car to the, uh, car wash. And I said, you know, we can save on money here and we can wash this car ourselves. So we actually invested in some car cleaning materials. We use the chemical guys. They by far have the best quality uh, chemicals for car cleaning. And it's not like oversaturated, but it helps. They have like a lot of odor de deodorizers because we've got our car back and they've been smelly. We're in California. People smoke weed in them. People maybe don't smell right. You just never know. So you, a lot of times you got to deodorize your car. You got to make sure it's sanitized and everything like that. So chemical guys is good. They're at Walmart. Um, but you just want to have, you know, basic cleansing of the car. Make sure when you hand it off to someone, it's thick and spack, it's full of gas, and they're going to return it hopefully the same way. A lot of people will return it clean. Some, some people, you know, they're not as great about that. But if for some reason someone does cause damage outside of what your insurance policy is with Turo, because um, you always have to keep uh, full coverage insurance. Well, at least in California, I would always recommend keeping full coverage insurance. But Turo actually has additional insurance. And we're going to go over some of their insurance plans and how they work. So they use traveler's insurance and you'll just print out a little insurance card from travelers under Turo's policy. So if anyone has any issues, they're going to use Turo policy and not your policy. But there's different plans that they offer that cover different things. So um, always do your market research prior, find out what other people are charging. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to um, log into Turo. I'm going to make myself the host on my cell phone so I can share with you the Turo app. The Turo app is going to be the easiest way for you guys to use Turo because of the fact that um, online, it's, it's, it's an app. It's, it's made to be an efficient app. So let me go ahead and try to find myself on here. Share my screen. This is the Turo app. Um, under your host settings, you'll see your earnings. You'll see different settings. Um, they're going to automatically put all your payments into your bank account. So it's super easy 
to do uh, Turo. All you're going to do is list your vehicles here and um, they will tell you a lot of, you know, I see a lot of people taking courses and classes on Turo and um, I never really did that because I all I learned all this stuff on my own. I, I heard about it and I said, this is a great opportunity. I don't ever want to pay my car notes. So I'd rather have other people pay my liabilities. Um, so you just kick plus and you would add the address and I always say add the address of the airport or add the address as like an alternative location where you know a lot of people are going to find your car. People that are searching for rental cars are going to be, you know, travelers near the airport or maybe they are people that are getting work done on their car and regardless of the fact a lot of insurance companies will just pay the client directly like $30 a day to rent a car and then they could pay whatever else is on top of that so you can even partner with like local mechanic shops and get your name out there like that and just provide them with your Turo link um, if you go into your settings um, actually let me go into something right here you go into here and account you can actually go and share your turo link with a, with people hold on one second and you can connect your facebook account <clears throat> you can also connect your google account so you can uh, connect your google my business account uh which is pretty cool let me see where i get the ding uh link to share with people because i've shared this before with people that were that i just like hear talking about rental cars and they'll say oh i've never heard of turo before and i'm like oh yeah well they don't really advertise so it doesn't surprise me that you haven't heard of them but um i guess it's only on the the website i'll have to find whether you guys get the little link from but um with Turo, this is where you would go. You go to the little host button, and these are all the settings and earnings. So let's go through each of these individually. So this is where all of your vehicles are going to be located. Uh, Turo Go is not eligible in my area, but it might be available in your area. So you can always check, and that's basically where you can like unlock it um, from like different uh, apps and stuff like that. But I would rather meet my people directly to pick it up or have someone go meet them on my behalf, like a co-host. So if you're away on work or you're just not able to, maybe you have like a mom, brother, cousin, somebody that can actually go and take your vehicle and then take like a Uber back or maybe someone could pick them up just so they can help you out. All you have to do is just make sure it's gassed up and it's clean, okay? And that they take pictures of the vehicle and take pictures of the guest holding their identification um, and upload that to the Turo app. Now, there's different um, host achievements, the performance, I guess you could say. Um, we have still not made all-star hosts because we don't accept everyone who wants to rent our cars. We profile people. I never, ever, ever have my Turo uh, bookings set up on auto confirm because I want to see who is renting my car. And there have been some shady looking individuals that don't have any trips under their belt. And I'm not willing to take that risk. I am looking for people that have had some trips. They have some reviews and they have positive reviews. Um, there was a gentleman that we had an issue with, and he did not return our vehicle. We were at the uh, airport waiting for him. He never showed up. We could tell where our car was because we have a tracking device on it. We use um, Drone Mobile. You can use any sort of tracking device, but we use Drone Mobile. You can check them out. I think I paid maybe about 500 bucks for the Drone Mobile system plus installation and the, uh, the application um, monthly fee to track your vehicle is... I want to say like 20 bucks per vehicle or something like that. But I like it because I always know where our cars are in real time. If we see someone speeding or doing something crazy, we can kill the engine. So it has a lot of features on there that, you know, you can take, um, you know, and, and get your car back if you needed to go take control over your vehicle. So we're over there like, man, we're going to have to go take our car. This guy ain't meeting us. He's not responding. His phone number is disconnected. This is horrible. Thank God we got the tracking device so we know where this guy's at. But he only had one trip under his belt. So that's a prime example of this guy has only had one trip on Turo. He's not a very, you know, um, you know, 
I guess you could say, um, experienced Turo driver and those people might not be the best ones. You know, it's always good to have guests that have a few trips under their belt. And, you know, we have had a lot of guests that were first time users that were great guests, but you know, it's, it is a new app. So you just have to kind of go with your instincts. So, um, these are some of the standards that you have to uphold in order to receive the all-star hosting. And our next assessment is April 15th and we probably won't even make it then because our response rate is really well response rate meaning when someone sends you a message your guests have your vehicle and they're sending you a message you need to respond to them i don't care if they say uh, okay cool thanks no problem needs to be your response you always have to respond to them because turo is very big on customer service so we've responded to 96 percent of our um guests in um, that's, they require a host, all-star host to have 95%. Now acceptance rate. This is something that I, I was just kind of, go ahead. Yes. All right. Um, so you said there's a tracking device on the vehicle. Do you, uh, let the guests know that or you just. No, they do not know that. And they cannot see it. They have no idea that they're being tracked. All right. Thank you. No problem. Uh, acceptance rates. So they want their all-star host to have a 90% acceptance rate. Now you can see here, we've only accepted 135 trips out of 178 requests because sometimes we'll get some, you know, people that we're not so sure about, like, you know, we're asking them or they want to go out of state and we're not okay with that. We don't want our car leaving the state. And people have taken our car out of state because they get up to 200 miles per day, unless you do unlimited miles, but you know, 200 miles can definitely get you out of state. So we'll decline people when they say, Oh, we're just going to go to a trip to Vegas, or we want to go here. We're like, eh, no. And, or if someone doesn't have any trips and they're brand new to Turo and maybe they just, we're not too sure. Um, their name ain't right. Their photo looks shady. No, we're not, we're not reading out to those people. We had a couple that wanted to rent our uh, Camry and they were at the casino and they looked like, they did drugs. Like people look like they did drugs. So of course we're not going to accept it because we're like, no, I, I don't think that they, I can't trust that, you know, and don't feel afraid to say no, because this is your car at the end of the day, you're responsible for it. And some people, you just might not feel comfortable with them taking your car. So you just have to make, you know, the best decision based on how your instinct feels and, you know, what they say on their message and why they want to rent your car. Um, commitment host. So we, um, have honored 128 out of our 134 trips. So we, uh, meet that standard because they require all, all star hosts to have a 95% commitment rate. And basically sometimes people have to extend trips. We have to cancel trips. So, um, maybe we'll have to cancel at the last minute. Like we did recently where we had a client, he could not get a flight out of Sacramento. So he had to extend his trip and we had to cancel a trip with another lady because, um, you know, he didn't have, he did not have a way to even get around. So, and plus it's way easier when someone wants to extend their trip because they already have the car and you don't have to make another delivery and they're still paying the same price. Um, five-star rating. So this is really important. You guys want to make sure that you ask every single guest for a five-star rating. We always try to provide and go above and beyond for our clients and ask them, Hey, would you mind please providing us with a five-star review? And some people have gave us a four-star review. Um, you know, we had one guy who gave us a four-star review because we had to change his car out at the last minute. We didn't have one of the cars available. So we had to put him in a different car and he gave us a four-star review because of that, because we weren't, we didn't tell him ahead of time, but it's like, do you want a car or not? What does it really matter? You know, you still got a car. We still picked you up at the time, but you know, some people are just like that. So, um, they require all their all-star hosts to have at least a uh, 90% of five-star ratings, which we have 96. So that, that would meet that criteria. And, um, all-star hosts have to complete at least 10 trips. We've completed 90 trips so far. So we've done, uh, quite, quite a bit of trips. And the only thing that we really have to try to get up is our acceptance rate in order to meet that all-star hosting. But, you know, at this point, um, you know, you have to be a little selective. So it just, um, you know, that doesn't bother me because we still have really good reviews. Our guests say really positive things about us. And that's what people look for. We literally have people 
that do business with us based on our reviews. So 88% of all of our reviews are five stars. So our overall rating is 4.95, which is really good. And you can see here that all most of our guests here um, was very happy. And I'm not sure what this is. Host canceled this trip. Oh, I don't know why that says that. But, um, you know, most of our guests are very happy with our, you know, um, service here. And that's what people look for. They, they look for reviews.